Hey, Larkin Rose here. In any intellectual contest, I think it's important to be able to turn the chessboard around in your mind. Uh, in other words, to see the game from your opponent's point of view. Uh, to see what weaknesses you may have, what his strategy may be, basically how he sees the world. Uh, in other words, know your enemy. That saying's only been around forever. Um, and if you've ever been one of those people out in front of some capitol building, state or federal, I don't care, some, some politician's office holding a sign and saying, We're, we don't want this, we don't want war on Syria, we don't want this, that, or the other thing, whatever you're protesting, or, or if you've ever like called your congressman and said, I strongly oppose whatever you happen to strongly oppose that day. Has it ever occurred to you to wonder what things look like from the viewpoint of the politician, to imagine how he sees things? And I'm not talking about, come on, you have to walk a mile in his shoes before he has a tough job. I'm not talking about that at all. I mean, strategically, have you ever considered how they see you, how people in power see you when you protest or you beg for this or that or the other thing? Do you really imagine that they are there in their big office buildings thinking, gosh, I hope I'm doing what my constituents want, and then the phone rings, they pick it up. Oh my gosh, you wanted me to do something else? I'm so sorry, I will run off and change it right away. Do you really think that's how they see the world? Do you really think that's how they think? Do you really think they care in the slightest what you actually want? You know, it, it may be fun to go and scream at them, but what do you hope to accomplish? What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going through their mind if they look out their window and see a bunch of people protest? Do you really think the congressmen are looking out of their office windows thinking, ah, oh, here I was thinking that these people really wanted another tax hike or really wanted us to give billions of their dollars to giant banks and corporations or really wanted us to go start another war? Golly! I guess they didn't want that, we better go change things right away. If you think they care, what would it take to convince you that they don't? I mean, it's only the most cliche thing in the world to say that a politician broke his promises. Well, he never intended to keep his promises, they weren't even promises in his mind, they were the things to say to dupe you into giving them power. I mean, take Barack Obama as an example. That lots and lots of people just thought was the savior of the world. Now, do you actually think that he was really pro, I mean, anti-war and pro-peace and pro-freedom when he ran for office, but since then said, no, nah, I think it's good to have wars all over the place. He lied to you, so you put him in power. And the moment he was in power, he didn't care what you think. He didn't care what you think before you voted. He just wanted you to vote, so he lied to you and pretended to be something he isn't. Golly, when has that ever happened? Well, every political election always, <laughs> since the beginning of time. They pretend to have an agenda other than what you want. Because if they actually wanted what you want, they would vote for you. <laughs> they want power for themselves, which is why they run for office. But they know to get your vote when they're having little competitions with their fellow megalomaniacs to see who is going to hold that seat for a while. They, the contest is basically which of them is better at lying to you and duping you into thinking they care in the slightest about what you want and want to go there to serve your interests. So really, when you scream and holler at them, it, it kind of implies that you think they care. I mean, look at Obama and all the happy warmongering he's doing. Again, does anyone imagine he changed his mind that he used to actually be pro-peace? And the people are like, we voted for you and we don't want this. He knows you don't want it. That's why when he was campaigning, he pretended to be anti-war. And you fell for it. And you believed it. Now that he's in office, you think he's going to start caring now? He didn't care then. He doesn't care now. You put him into power and there's nothing you can do about it now. Ha ha. These people, and it's, it's hard for decent moral people to get into the mindset of a politician because basically they're sociopaths. They couldn't care in the slightest about you. Not even just what you want. They don't care if you suffer and die as long as they have their power. And you can see it in their policies. They, you know, their gun control policies, 
They're trying to disarm people knowing that leads to higher crime rates. They're trying to do things knowing it leads to disasters in the economy and people going bankrupt and lo losing their houses. They don't care about you. And when you go and beg them, you're basically saying, I know you care about me, master, which is just pathetic. They don't. And as long as you address them as if they do, you're just wasting their time. your time. It's like, well, there's this carjacker that stole my car, and I'm going to write him a sternly worded letter telling him just what I think of the fact that he stole it. He doesn't care. He does not care in the slightest. Neither does anyone in Congress. I mean, look at what they always do against the will of the people. You really think they're sitting in their office going, you know, what my constituents are telling me, what the people really want, is higher taxes. So why do they constantly raise taxes? This is the one thing they do care about. They don't care what you want. They don't care about your comfort. They don't care about your safety. They do care about you in the way a farmer cares about his livestock. They don't want you running away, and they don't want you goring them next time they walk into the field. The only things the politicians care about is, are you going to overthrow them and or disobey them? And that's all. They don't care about you as people. I mean, and this is something that, that my book, The Most Dangerous Superstition, gets into. And again, most people have a really hard time comprehending this because we're not psychotic and sociopathic enough to be able to think in these terms. But imagine, this is a tough mental exercise, imagine that somebody could actually convince you that you had the divine right to rule the world. Like, you were selected by God to rule the world. You are king. You are the rightful king of the world. Everyone else is your rightful subject and has an obligation to obey you. You have the right to rule. Now, you have to be a little bit nuts to believe such a lie, but if you can try to imagine that, how do you think you would view and treat other people? Would you treat them as equals? No. If you were actually convinced that they were your subjects, basically your property, you wouldn't treat them like people. It's like the slave master will never be nice to the slaves because he views them as property. The moment he views them as people, he recognizes that what he's doing is horribly evil and says, oh, you're free, sorry, I, like, let me do anything I can possibly do to make up for the fact that I just stole a ton of your life from you. But that never happens because he's convinced, no, they're my rightful property, and he treats them accordingly, just like a farmer treats livestock. Actually, slave masters can sometimes be nastier because something inside them tells them that this isn't quite right and they take it on a slave. Anyway, that's a different psychological thing. But if you, if you get into the mindset of somebody who actually thinks he is authority. Now, my whole thing in, in The Most Dangerous Superstition and a bunch of what I do is look at how the belief in authority affects different groups. One of the groups that most people don't usually think about, I mean, I talk about how it affects cops and soldiers all the time, but the actual lawmakers, the people who are duped into believing that they have the right to control you and take your money, they can't view you as equal. It's utterly incompatible with them imagining that they are lawmakers, that they are authority and have the right to do that. If you thought you had the right to demand money from your neighbor, and cage him if he didn't pay, would you treat him as an equal? By definition, anybody who runs for Congress, anybody in Congress, thinks he has the right to demand money of you by way of taxation and send guys with guns to cage you if you don't pay up. And you really think they're there to serve you? And in addition to the robbery, there's all the, all the choices they forcibly control, all the things they make you do, all the things they prevent you from doing all the ways in which they send their armed thugs to violently interfere in your life. This shows their mentality, and this is not debatable. This is all their laws do. All they ever do, day after day, is issue threats backed by, or, or commands backed by a threat of violence. Here's what you have to do, here's what you're not allowed to do, here's what our armed mercenaries are going to come do to you, fine you, imprison you, whatever, if you disobey. It is literally impossible for someone to think that that's legitimate and care what his subject, his property, wants. So when you talk to them as if they care, as if, if we just appeal to their better nature 
It's like a cow going to a farmer and saying, I want to be free. And the car farmer hears, Mrgh. and he goes, oh, well, whatever. The farmer will do enough to keep the cow alive and well-fed, even happy to a certain point, to be more productive. Likewise, the politicians want their subjects to be content and comfortable enough that they don't revolt or run away or, or one way or another mess up their happy little arrangement with the, uh, the control freaks being parasites off the productive people. But they don't care about you as people. They don't care what you want. They can. If anybody really cared what you want as a human being, he would never imagine himself to have the right to rule you. So don't go to the politicians and say, we really want... They don't care any more than the carjacker or the purse thief or the rapist cares what his victim wants. They don't care in the slightest. And as long as you keep talking to them and, and asking them for things and petitioning them, you're just demonstrating that you don't really know what's going on, that you don't really understand the game, and you don't understand your opponent. You don't understand your enemy. If you really think he cares, if you think reasoning with him and begging with him is ever going to make a bit of difference in his mind, if you really think he's there sitting in his office, whether it's a congressman or, or Obama, I'm going to call Obama and tell him, I voted for him so he would stop wars. He doesn't care. He didn't care when he was campaigning. He doesn't care now. He's never going to care. You are either cattle or you're cannon fodder. He will send your kids over to die because it will th he thinks it will help his image. Even if it won't, he's not even doing a good job of that. He doesn't care. Literally, he has demonstrated that he is willing to kill Americans to help his political image. So going to him and saying, we insist that you... No. And this is the thing, is it's comfortable to beg the master. It's comfortable for the cow to say, come on, farmer, let me be free. What's uncomfortable is saying, we have to make ourselves free. Asking the master isn't going to do anything. The master doesn't care. He never has. He wouldn't be a master if he saw us as human. The two don't match. You cannot be both at the same time. You cannot think that you're a lawmaker and be a moral human being. Because what a lawmaker does is violently extort and control millions of people by way of, of threats and armed mercenaries. As long as he's a politician, don't talk to him. It doesn't do any good. He is the enemy. He is the parasite. He is the aggressor. He is the attacker. Him and all his hired thugs. So, and I'm not saying don't do anything. So often when I make these videos, oh, so you don't want us to do anything, we just want to keep quiet and obey. No, I want you to keep quiet and disobey. Because the farmer will care if the cows run away or if they run him over, stampede over him one day. But before people have any prayer of getting free, they have to understand the game. They have to understand what they're up against. And the main thing they're up against is inside their own head, which is the belief in authority. It's also inside the head of the mercenaries on the other side, the cops and the soldiers, and it's inside the head of the lawmakers and the people in government and presidents and congressmen and these delusional sociopathic nutcases who think they have the right to rule you. Don't petition them and beg them. That doesn't ever work. Start by thinking, okay, given how many mercenaries they have, given their delusional notion that they have the divine right of politicians, the divine right to rule us, how do we avoid that? How do we get away? How do we defeat the enemy? And step one is know your enemy. And the moment you understand what it takes for someone to be in a position of authority is the moment you stop asking them for anything.